Welcome back to my channel. Remember that in my previous videos, I showed you how to build an internet radio using off-the-shelf components. But in today's video, I'm going to take this to the next level by designing an original circuit board for my internet radio version 5. In this video, I'll take you through all the steps and tips I learned to build my own internet radio. Let's get started. version, the first step is to design a circuit board. But why design your own? Off-the-shelf components may be convenient, but they can be bulky and take up a lot of space. I use a KiCad to design a circuit. It's a powerful open source electronic design automation tool. It's widely used and easy to work with. My goal was to design a circuit that works, looks good, saves space, and to use all the parts from the modules in my last videos. Before we get into the details, let me introduce a PCB manufacturer for you. PCB GoGo. -Go. PCB GoGo -Go is a quick turn PCB prototype manufacturer from China with over 10 years of operation in the industry. They make prototype PCBs as fast as 24 hours. You can upload your Gerber file on PCBGoGo.com to make your own PCB. Their services are reliable and affordable, certified by UL and ISO. This video is sponsored by PCBGoGo. -Go. I began my search for service mount components and the parts I needed for this project by browsing popular online marketplaces such as AliExpress and LCSC. These sites offered a wide variety of components at competitive prices, which made it easy for me to find the specific components I needed. I also checked out some local suppliers in my area, which allowed me to see and handle the components in person before I making a purchase. In the end, I was able to find and purchase all the components I needed for my project from a combination of these different sources. The process was relatively easy and straightforward, and I was able to find all the components I needed at a reasonable price. I decided to use a USB Type-C connector for this project because it can be plugged in either way, making it more convenient and user-friendly. It could be a smart choice to improve the durability of my board. With the PCB in hand, it was time to begin the assembly and soldering process. Have you ever faced the challenge of soldering service mount components? The process can be tricky, but with a little patience and a practice, anyone can master it. Actually, there are several firsts for me with this project. One, it's my first time designing such a complex PCB. Two, it'll be my first time to try surface mount by hand. Three, and of course, 
It's my first time to solder a QFN24 package, like CP2014. I will start with CP2014, as it seems to be the most difficult one. If I can do it, the others should work well too. One of the reasons why QFN packages are hard to hand solder is that the leads are located on the bottom of the package and are not visible from the top. This makes it difficult to align the package correctly on the PCB and to ensure that all the leads are properly soldered. Additionally, the leads are very close together, which makes it difficult to apply enough solder to each lead without creating solder bridges between the leads. Another reason is that QFN packages have a very small thermal mass, which makes it difficult to apply enough heat to the package to melt the solder without damaging the components. However, I somehow managed to successfully solder it by hand, and my first challenge is a big victory. After successfully soldering the most difficult QFN24, I feel confident to solder the following components. These are the components around the CP2014. The capacitors, the resistors, the transistors are all service mount components. This is also the first time I've ever soldered in my life. The larger tantalum capacitors were a bit heavier and didn't get blown away by the hot air, so soldering them was relatively easy. The transistors were also tough components to solder. The hard part was the 0603 resistors and capacitors. Perhaps because of their small volume, they tended to get blown away by the hot air before the solder melted. After that, soldering the ESP32 module was not so difficult because it is a large component. However, it was very difficult to align it with the footprint on the PCB. Next to the ESP32 are two capacitors. These are used to bypass noise from the power supply. Next is a USB Type-C connector. I don't want to make the video super long to spend more time on the soldering process, so I'll keep the description of the soldering process as short as possible. After the USB Type-C, there are the reset and boot buttons and then the components around the PCM5102. The PCM5102 is a stereo audio digital to analog converter. It converts the digital data from the radio into analog signals, which are then sent to the amplifier to drive the speakers and bring the music to our ears. The next step is the uh, potentiometer, which controls the volume, a pin header for the LCD display, and a rotary encoder for internet radio selection. Last but not least is the amplifier. The most difficult part here is the surface mount electrolytic capacitor. It was harder to hold with the tools that I had than I expected and it took a long time to solder successfully. That's all about the soldering. The video makes it look quick, but in reality, I worked on it on and off for about a day. With the PCB fully assembled, it was time to program the ESP32 and bring it to life. 
I used the platform mail to write the code and upload it to the board I soldered. Once the code was uploaded, the board was able to connect to the internet and stream music without any hiccups. I was also able to control the volume and change stations, use the rover encoder and the buttons just like the previous version. And display showed the current station and the song it was playing. When I designed this board, I wanted to experiment with other things besides the internet radio functions. Therefore, I designed the board to be able to use not only a large LCD display, but also a small 240 by 240 display, just by connecting it to the pin header I prepared. The demo on the screen you see now is a slightly modified version of the code borrowed from Voto's projects. Other GPIOs that are not used by the Internet Radio can also be used for other purposes. You can move the servos, you can connect sensors, just like any other general purpose ESP32 development board. And you also have a display and rotary encoder ready to go. I could even build an Internet Radio that uses the smaller display. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed following along as I built my own internet radio. It's been a journey full of learning. I've learned how to use a ESP32 and a PCM5102, a rotary encoder and display in my project, how to design a PCB using KiCad, and I've also gained some experience soldering the service mount components. I know I still have a lot to learn and I can't wait to start my next project. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next video like this. Thanks for watching and see you next time.